Hey guys, this is Substitute Topher out here in Borrego Springs, California, driving the 2022 Honda Passport Trail Sport. If you're unfamiliar with this car, it's sort of the rugged and off-road focused version of the Honda Passport, what the Topher would call a soft rotor. We're gonna take a little bit of a walk around around this car. We already did some off-roading in this and um, you'll be able to see that a little bit later in this video. We're going to start with some on-road driving impressions. We'll switch to the off-road and then we'll come back around to on-road for some final thoughts and a closing. But uh, yeah, let's do a little walk around of this thing so I can show you what they've changed for 2022. Well, first of all, with this Trail Sport, we have 18-inch wheels and some highway terrain tires, I believe is what they're called. So they're a little bit more rugged, but they don't scream when you're going down the highway. These particular ones are Firestone Destination. Did a pretty good job off-roading today and they're actually very quiet just driving around on paved roads as well overall for the whole passport segment we have new sheet metal from the a pillars forward we've got new fenders new hood new front fascia this grille is a little bit different it looks a bit more like the ridge line now honda's really going for that rugged off-road look especially for this trail sport model as you can see we've got the trail sport badge right here we've got a gray honeycomb grill and we also have a painted gray lower garnish right here on the front bumper this car's finished in sonic gray it's kind of like a blue green gray when the light hits it just right it has a very very nice blue tint to it we've got black mirror caps on this car we also have gotten a little bit of a facelift in the back we've got tinted taillights a little bit darker than just the normal passport those are unique to the Trail Sport. We've got black badging for our Passport and our all-wheel drive badge. And this badge right here is pretty cool, the Trail Sport badge in orange. And you'll see a lot of that orange in the interior as well once we get in. We've also got some very aggressive dual exhausts straight out the back. I think that looks pretty nice. And all these Trail Sports come, that's loud, all of these Trail Sports come with a power lift gate as standard. Pretty easy to fold down the rear seats, with just the push of a button. We've got this little compartment here for extra storage. This also folds up pretty easily. It's got a little bit of weight to it, but not too bad. A couple of cup holders back here. We've got two in the door panel. And then we've got a couple more here in the center armrest. Very large back seat sit up nice and high i've got tons of headroom in here as well this whole interior is really just a nice place to be and i've been enjoying it the past couple of days take a look here at the front and we'll move up here in just a second but everything looks pretty familiar pretty much the same as the pre-facelift passport i can go ahead and step up front oh hold on forgot something important aha sunshades very important, especially if you're in California and you want to shade yourself from the sun or from bystanders uh, outside the car that you don't want to see. Honda has thought of that with adding sunshades, so that's always good. Nice orange stitching there on the door panel. Before I get in, I want to show these. These are the all-season trail sport mats that come on this car. Pretty cool, we've got orange lettering there on those. And the seats themselves, we've got lots of orange stitching around the edges, down the middle. And then embossed here on the headrest, we have Trail Sport, the same logo that you'll find on the back and on the front. Steering wheel as well. We've got some orange stitching on here, as well as paddle shifters. So that looks nice. It's also perforated on the edges, which helps with grip when you have sweaty hands like I do, especially when you're off-roading. Big compartment here, I've just got my hat in here right now, but as you can see, fits a ton of stuff. We've got some power outlets. This is all carried just from the pre-facelift Passport. Really just aesthetic changes in here. All right, well, what do you guys say we take this thing out for a street drive? We'll do some off-road impressions and then let you know my final thoughts on the Passport Trail Sport. Pretty nice reversing camera and that line of course swivels with you while you steer push button shifter down here same as the normal passport
<laughs> this thing's pretty quick. So we have under the hood the same 3.5 liter V6 with 280 horsepower and 262 foot-pounds of torque. Nothing different up there, but it is really a great powertrain. It feels very sufficient for this car, and that's still backed by the 9-speed automatic, tuned very nicely, very, very smooth transmission. Won't let you bounce off the rev limiter, but that's pretty irrelevant for this car, so we'll, we'll gloss over that for now. This car is entering a somewhat new segment of soft rotors. So we have the Explorer Timberline, we have the Subaru Outback Wilderness, which I actually haven't driven yet. We're gonna be driving that actually in just a couple of weeks. And we have this, and I'm sure there's more that I'm forgetting, but it's cool to see that segment of just slightly elevated SUVs that are just slightly more capable than the normal car. Now this doesn't have any sort of suspension tweaks at all. It's riding on the same suspension as just the normal Passport. It's tuned slightly differently because this one's on 18 inch wheels with a thicker sidewall on the tire, of course. They've got more aggressive tires. So they've tuned the suspension slightly different, but I mean, it rides essentially just like the normal Passport. So nothing different there. We don't have any more ground clearance, I would say, I mean, unless it's down to millimeters just because of the tire size, but the suspension is the same. And we were driving this car off-road earlier and it's actually very, very capable. And a lot of people are probably gonna give this car, the Explorer Timberline, the Outback Wilderness, they're gonna give those cars all kinds of hate because they're not really proper off-roaders. They're not super tuned up like Jeep Wranglers or the Ford Bronco, but that's not the point. These cars are just slightly elevated for people that, you know, are occasionally going down a state park trail or something that they just want a little bit extra tire a little bit extra for and this car delivers uh, just right and I think it actually looks a bit better too it fits the more rugged aesthetic of an SUV that I wish more SUVs did I like all the orange I like the tires it works for me I think the Passport overall is just kind of a nice chunky like shorter wheelbase just kind of a cool design that I've always really enjoyed Something worth mentioning about the Trail Sport trim is that it does come standard with all-wheel drive, and you can see that display right here in the middle, at least I hope you can, of our iVTM4 all-wheel drive torque vectoring system, which with our four drive modes here, normal, snow, mud, and sand, can change how much power gets sent to each of the four wheels, and it can send up to 70% of the power to the rear wheels, and of that 70%, 100% to either side, which is pretty neat. Definitely we're able to tell that off-road that this thing is just constantly thinking and adapting and um, feeling out where there's grip, where there's not grip, which tire should it spin here. And I mean, this is not only on the Trail Sport, you can get this iVTM4 on any all-wheel drive equipped Passport. So that's nice. These tires certainly help though when you are off-roading. I love how you can hear that switch over <laughs> oh, when it hits VTEC. Oh, love a good Honda. <laughs> the Trail Sport starts at around $42,000, and it comes equipped with everything you see here as standard. This is a very, very mild Trail Sport. As I mentioned, it's really only wheels, tires, and appearance. But going on in the future, they want to add skid plates. They want to add bigger tires. They want to add a lifted suspension. They want to keep doing more. So... I guess we'll have to see, but I mean, really, I don't see why you would really need to because the kind of person that buys this car doesn't need all that stuff and they just want to, you know, do the occasional off-road, mild off-road, and I think this car will sell very well in the north as well where it snows because it'll be very convenient to have this four-wheel drive and a little more aggressive tire on it. All right, well, I think it's time now to interrupt myself for the off-road portion of this video. We're doing some off-roading today and a little bit of a lead follow setup here. I've got a walkie-talkie, so please excuse this uh, lovely gentleman from Honda if he interrupts me while I'm talking. But anyways, we're in this new Passport Trail Sport. God, we're starting off with a freaking doozy already, huh? I'm certainly not an export in off-roading, but if James May has taught me anything. It's that you keep your thumbs on the outside of the wheel in case it kicks or something like that. <laughs> I'm a little bit out of my element here, but this is pretty cool. Oh, yes. Oh. 
We can change our drive modes down here with this button. I've just been rolling in normal mode for right now. It seems to be handling everything just fine. We've got a section later where we're gonna try out sand mode, uh, which messes with your throttle map, uh, gives you a little bit more of a rear wheel drive bias. So that should be pretty helpful when we're in some deep sand. This is like a proper trail that we're going on. But I mean, this thing seriously feels right at home. I will say if I've learned anything about off-roading thus far is that it's extremely bouncy. Just everything's like washboard out here. It's crazy also driving on sand, how much traction you don't have. It feels like I'm driving in soup or like just driving, driving on air or on a cloud or something. There's all the steering input and nothing happens. <laughs> this is crazy though. Look at these mountains out here. Oh, we've got some rocks. Mustn't hit those. A little bit of a technical. Ooh, the one in front of me's done a little bit of a three wheel. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yes. Oh, I've indicated the wipers. <laughs> wow. Honda's really set out to go after the Toyota 4Runner with this car. Funny enough, that's kind of what they've chose as the benchmark. Funny enough, the Topher himself owns a 4Runner, so we'll have to see what he thinks about that. <laughs> But I will say, genuinely, this thing does feel at home. I know that this is what they would consider a soft rotor, and I suppose thus far we've really only done soft roading, but I don't feel uncomfortable. I don't feel out of place. <laughs> All right, we've got our first real obstacle up here, it seems. Just like that, you gone. Tell your wheel a little bit to your left. Yep. I'm gonna be... right, stand by. Back up a little bit. Take a little bit to the left. Send it. Alright, keep coming. Now straight. Now throttle through. Now slow. There we go. Perfect. Alright, I'm gonna be proactive and go sand mode Come for on this. Down. I've made it through, but I've bottomed the car out. Ooh. Well done. Yep, thank you. Well done, though. I did not get stuck like the car in front. Just like that. Keep it like that. This is a very fresh car. We've only got 140 miles on this thing. <laughs> and this is what we're doing with it. <laughs> this is great fun, though. I'm having a lot of fun. I can see why the Topher has a 4Runner. Because you can go and do stuff like this. All right, well, if you didn't hear me over all the walkie-talkie babble, I did switch the car into sand mode to go over that obstacle. I saw the way that thing was just spinning its front wheels like crazy, and when you're into sand mode, you get more bias towards the rear wheels. It's worth mentioning also that sand mode keeps you in a little bit of a lower gear, so running at about 2,000 RPM right now as opposed to, well, what, 800 RPM or something. can really feel that that IVTM torque vectoring system choosing which wheel it wants to spin. This is terrifying. I cannot see. Watching that wall. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, even though this is a soft rotor, you know, of course, you don't have any sort of like trail cams or anything crazy like that. This thing is impressing me just because, well, I've only bottomed it out once, and I would say that that's pretty impressive. I always love the parts of off-roading where you simply just can't see what you're doing. Wow, look at that one. It's like a Fiesta ST doing autocross, lifting that back wheel up. Here it comes. No problem at all. 
kind of want to, ooh, that was a big one. I kind of want to put this thing back into normal mode and just see how it continues to handle this. That'll turn our traction control back on. And if you haven't noticed, we actually have a display here in the middle of the cluster. I've selected this display for our off-roading because you can see where the IVTM is sending the power when you're doing stuff like this. It's pretty cool. As you can see there when I'm just normally on the gas. All right, so now we've got quite a bit of power going to the rear as it can sense I'm going up a hill. Oh, great, another spot where I can't see anything. Go nice and slow. Yes, very good. I like this, this is fun. <laughs> you can certainly feel in sand mode that the system is putting in less work because it's already giving you the majority of your power to those rear wheels. And there's a wall right here. It doesn't crash into the wall, yes. You can feel traction control. Tap, tapping the brake down on this. Once you come down this up, keep it nice and slow because it does have a little dip right there. You can really feel that system thinking when you're in normal mode. Sending uh, power to the front wheels there. Once you come down that hump there, it's just nice and slow on the brake because there is a dip at the end of it. Nice and slow on brake because there's a dip, yes. So we do have 8.1 inches of ground clearance in this trail sport. This is the, the early days of Substitute Topher going out in the world and experiencing everything firsthand. And it's nice to have all of you guys along with me. I've never done any sort of off-roading like this before. You can traverse that wall if you want to or go straight if you're not comfortable with it. I'm totally traversing the wall absolutely traversing the wall. There's no way I'm not going to do that. Ooh, yes. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. I love the feel of the steering wheel as well. Having the perforated leather, as silly as this sounds, really helps your grip. And my hands tend to sweat. And um, the Topher doesn't know of this because he doesn't sweat. He's a little bit of a different human, but since I am normal and I do sweat, the perforations genuinely really help me uh, maintain grip on this steering wheel. And of course we have orange stitching, so it looks cool. Yes, can't see where I'm going, but. Ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> oh God, this is like a 90, how is it gonna? Gonna to want to be on the brakes going down this very much. Oh, this is like proper right now. There's no way the car's not gonna bottom up. Working the pedals here. Ooh, Lord have mercy. This is like proper Jeep Wrangler territory right now. The walkie talk is jig. gotten it stuck it's okay I'm gonna select sand mode get myself out of this Thank you. Just like that, guys. This is the hardest I've concentrated in so long. Thank you, Matt Farah. Appreciate that. Oof. All right. And apart from me going too far left there, this thing just didn't care. It just went over everything. I think sand mode is certainly beneficial uh, for when you're driving in this sort of environment. Normal mode goes, gives you too much towards the front wheels. You know, if anything, I feel like this car might get a little bit of grief 
just because of the fact that they haven't really done a whole lot for this trail sport trim level to make it super off-roady. But I think in its performance on this trail, it shows that they didn't need to. The Passport as it is, is already a, seems to be anyways, pretty capable off-roader. All right guys, well that's gonna conclude our off-road portion of the Honda Passport Trail Sport. A truly very capable car out here in these trails that if you would have driven me through here in like a crazy Ultimate Recon Jeep Wrangler and told me I'm gonna be driving through here in an essentially stock Honda Passport, uh, I would have laughed and said there's no way that's gonna make it. Do I have any complaints with the Passport Trail Sport? <sighs> I don't really think so. Um, I think if they were to add one thing to this car to make it just a little bit more elevated, I would say adding some skid plates would be beneficial. I did bottom this thing out earlier when we were on the trail. No stop. I don't know, I would say maybe some of the interior materials aren't the nicest, but I mean, this is a $42,000 SUV. It's not gonna have leather everywhere. It's not gonna be plush in here like a $100,000 Mercedes. So I think for what it is with the perforated leather, the leather seats, it's all pretty nice. I think that they did a pretty good job. I would also maybe like to have a branded sound system. We don't have anything in here. It's just the normal Honda, you know, bass sound system. We do at least have some tweeters up here in the A pillars. But I'm hoping, seeing the trend that Honda's going with Bose, we have Bose in the new Civic, I'm hoping that these cars will start gaining some branded audio systems and be able to bring us a little bit of a better experience. This sound system's not bad, but it certainly could be better. And I think it would help just for this class of car as well, you know? Younger people that are buying this car like to have a good sound system. So that would certainly work in their favor. So better sound system, some skid plates, and I don't know, would it kill them to put leather on the top of the door panels? Probably not. Those are the suggestions that I would give to make this car a little bit better. All right, and that's gonna conclude our drive, on-road and off-road, of the Honda Passport Trail Sport. I hope you've all enjoyed watching this video. I've had quite a bit of fun experiencing this very mild new trim of the Passport. All right, let's do one last little walk around and then that'll be it for today. Such a good color on this, looks fantastic in the sun. All right guys, well, as I said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been Substitute Topher filling in for the Topher today, and we'll see you real soon in the next video.